Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.4 Beta 1. iOS 17.4 Beta 1 is out to developers and soon to public beta testers, and this update actually includes quite a few new features. Now this update, as you can see, comes in at a very large 6.42 gigabytes on my 15 Pro Max, and anytime you go from a regular version to a beta, it's going to reinstall everything. It won't necessarily take up more space after it's done reinstalling, it cleans up the overall files and typically overwrites the old ones. This was released alongside only a few other updates with iPadOS 17.4 Beta 1 and tvOS and HomePod OS 17.4 Beta 1. There's no update to Apple Watch or macOS just yet. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings and then under general and about, as you can see, the build number is 21E5184I. And so we're in the early stages of this update, but we do expect it probably sometime in a couple months. We'll talk about when to expect it a little bit later in the video. The first thing is we do have a modem update. So hopefully that helps with overall connectivity. We'll only know that in a few days after using it for a while. We'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. But as far as the first new features, well, we have have some new emoji. If we go into messages, we have over 30 new emoji, and these are to comply with the emoji 15.1 standard. Apple doesn't set these, they just draw the icons and comply with the standard, just like Android, Windows, Mac, and everything else. And as you can see, there's some new ones here, such as a brown mushroom, a lime, a phoenix, a head shaking left and right, up and down, breaking chains, then some identifiers such as a parent and two children, two parents and two children, and just a couple different versions of that, as well as people in a wheelchair facing right, motorized wheelchair, manual wheelchair, people with a stick facing right, and also kneeling facing right. Before we had the options for facing left, now we have facing right, along with all the different skin color options as well to go along with this. So you can adjust the skin tones here and update all of those emoji in this version. Now in the EU, this is a major update as it brings all new updates for side loading. This is to comply with different laws that Apple has to comply with in March. And those are now available only in the European union. So if we go over to Apple's website here, Apple's newsroom website actually announced that today. It says it announces changes to iOS Safari and the app store in the European union. It gives more details about what they'll have to comply with and also what people will have actually have to do in order to have those things third party app stores, what they need to do to install those and much more. So there's even new options for things such as streaming games, setting a default marketplace. Not everything is here yet as there's no third party app stores or apps just yet for the most part. And the app store now allows you to set default browsers with more options. That means you can use browsers that don't necessarily utilize WebKit. All of the current browsers that utilize WebKit means Chrome, for example, if you're using Chrome and I don't have it on here, but if you're using Chrome or a third party browser, they typically have to use the underlying code of Safari. Now they can use their own code in the EU. There's also alternative in-app payment methods, and there's some new options to go along with that. So the alternate in-app payment methods actually have been added. However, that may only be again for the European union. Now, if we go into our settings and then go down to privacy and security, you'll see there's a new option for contactless and NFC. It says applications that have requested the ability to use contactless and NFC will appear here. So far, there aren't any applications for this that will be available once iOS 17.4 is released, but we now have the option for it. Also, we have a new option or at least an identifier for the region. However, it doesn't seem to work properly just yet. If we go into general and then about, and then scroll to the bottom. Now, both of these phones have iOS 17.4 beta one on them, and they're both set to different regions. On the right, we have the United States on the left. We actually have a European union country. So both of them are not working properly. They'll probably fix that in the future. In addition to this, Aaron P 613 on X actually says iOS 17.4 will notify you if a third party app has malware. So it will detect that on its own and let you know. And Apple is also warned that screen time and sharing features may not work with alternate app distributions in the European union. So that's something that may not work properly as they may not comply with those screen time APIs, but there's a bunch of other APIs to go along with side loading and more.
There's also some updates to stolen device protection. This is something I think that's definitely needed. So if we go into settings within face ID and passcode, if we scroll down, you've got stolen device protection. This was added in iOS 17.3, but it was a little unclear how it worked. And now they've updated it with a new option that says require security delay always or away from familiar locations. So this should be a little bit better. If we turn this off now, you'll see it uses face ID. We'll try that again. And now that I'm in a familiar location, it turns off immediately where it didn't before. So we can turn that back on. And if we put always, it will actually delay it. So if I turn it off again, it will now delay it and I'll have to start that security delay. So that's something that they've updated. I think that's a good move as it was a little confusing before. Now music has a small update as well. If we go into music, we'll go back out of this here. Let's get out of this menu down at the bottom. It now says home before it used to say, listen now. So now we have a home page for music. I think that's a good idea. This was a little confusing before, and maybe this is a good sign that they're going to revamp the music app just a little bit. So hopefully they do that in the future updates within settings. We have some new options for Siri. If we scroll down, go to Siri and search. Now we have an option for messaging with Siri and we have options we had before with automatically send messages, but we also have an additional option for adding a language. We can now have Siri read back different messages in Arabic, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, French, all the way down to Turkish and Thai, and maybe they'll add additional languages in the future, but now they can read back. Hopefully they add this across iOS as I know this was sort of limiting in different countries with different languages, but it's great to see that addition. Also, there's a pretty major update with podcasts within podcasts. We now have sort of a transcription or lyric button, just like we do in music. So if I turn this down, here's the verge cast tap the button here and you'll see it's actually reading it in real time as they're speaking. So it's a real time transcription. You can search throughout it. And then also if we pause it, we'll bring that back down. We can go here and actually tap right there and see more information. So they've added some different tap areas to get back to the regular information. And that live transcription is something that they just added without telling anyone. So I think that's a great addition and definitely something I think a lot of people will use. Now also Apple CarPlay is getting an update where it's going to be native in different cars. We've seen that with Porsche and also Aston Martin, and it looks like in iOS 17.4, they're adding some icons from this. Thanks to my friend, Steve Mosier for pointing out some of these, but there's even more icons to help control in car, different applications and more. And that's something we'll see in the future. Also iOS 17.4 will be adding support for firmware updates with AirPods with USB C and also the USB C to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So if that needs an update, apparently it will add those features. That's something apparently we didn't have before that I wasn't aware of that Aaron P 613 pointed out on X. Now there's also bug fixes. There's probably many more features in this as we find more and more, but if we go into our feedback app, we have the latest release notes for iOS and iPad OS 17.4 beta one. And Apple has actually given us more information here. Well, if it loads, they have, there we go. Now it says general, there's some known issues where apps requiring certain managed entitlements might not install or show an error. We also have some home kit known issues with viewing home kit camera live video might not work when away from home. Also, there's known issues with maps, known issues with messages where stickers, Memoji and third party might appear blank. We've seen that before, and it's great that they're acknowledging this. And then we also have object capture as a new feature. A new manual bounding box flow is now initiated if automatic object detection fails to find an object. So we've got more things here, more known issues, also known issues with podcasts, setup assistant, and then some new features with store kit if you're developing for that. And then if we scroll down, we've got some resolved issues again for developers. So lots of good things in here, new features with Swift UI resolved features or issues and known issues with WebKit. So they continue to work on this and I'm glad to see all of this documentation. Finally, it's something I've complained about, they seem to sort of scale this back and now they're bringing back a lot more notes. Now, as far as bugs we've seen before, well, they're still there. The wallpaper dimming bug is there. So if I pull down the wallpaper here, you'll see that. You'll see if I swipe up, it sort of goes a little bit desaturated. So again, it will desaturate. And then the notification bug is there. It's ever present. They haven't fixed it yet. Maybe they're waiting for iOS 18 at this point. We don't really know. Now, as far as overall performance, well, one thing I did notice, despite what we'll see in Geekbench in a little bit, is the overall performance is quite fast. In fact, they may have changed some of the animation times as we go through music. Things seem to load very fast. They seem to open very quickly as I go back and forth. 
There's no delay whatsoever. You'll see that in all sorts of apps where it just has to load from the internet here, but if we go to search, everything switches much faster. So I don't know if they've sped up animations or not, but it feels very fast. ProMotion scrolls nice and smooth and fast, and just the overall experience is quite good. However, the phone is a little bit warm right now, and maybe that's why we have some Geekbench scores that aren't that great. I'll show you in a moment, but in general, it's a little bit warm. It's not super hot that you can't touch it, but it's definitely processing a lot in the background. Now, as far as battery, well, you may have already seen the battery cycle count here. So if you go to general, then about on my 15 pro max, I have 89 cycles. And unfortunately they haven't added that feature to previous devices. I checked on the 14 pro max and haven't seen that, but as far as battery life, let's go to battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100%. And if we go back to battery, it's okay. Depending on the day, this looks pretty terrible. Basically by the time I go to sleep at night, I'm down to about 20%. Before this, it used to be 40. Some people are seeing much better battery life though, but you'll see Lumi is using a lot of power. Maybe I need to turn that off and see if it changes. And you'll see, depending on the day, I am getting through the day. I don't know if these numbers are correct, but I am getting through the day and ending at about 20% or so. Let me know your experience in the comments below, and we'll check that on the weekend follow-up. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4 beta one, well, if you're in the European union, hoping to try out a bunch of apps right now, you may want to just wait because it's going to take a little bit for those apps to actually be available. Probably within the coming week, we'll see some of that third party app stores, things we can test. But at this point, there's not a ton out there as far as any other reason to install it. If you want to try out the different languages for Siri, you definitely could, but we don't know how stable this is, but so far, usually later in the year with iOS, it seems to be better. So as long as you have a backup or an additional device to downgrade, then definitely you can try it out. Now, as far as iOS 17.4 and when it should release, well, Apple has to comply by March. So at this point I would expect betas maybe every other week or every week through February and then a release sometime in March when specifically, we're not sure Apple hasn't said yet, but probably pretty soon. We'll probably see a rapid release of this. Maybe early March we'll see it and then we'll have side loading available to everyone, but either way that will be available. And I would expect more features even with beta two. typically the first beta we see few. So it looks like this could be a significant update. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go into Geekbench six and I did run this two times, but again, it feels like it's processing in the background as the phone's quite warm. You'll see we have 2,923 for single core, 7,081 for multi-core. Again, I ran this a couple times and it went down for multi-core and went up for single core. It will go up probably after a few days and we'll check it on the weekend and see what it's like in the weekend follow-up. Now, if you found anything in iOS 17.4 beta one, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course we'll have a follow-up with all the other features and more. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.